So in this segment, we're going to be talking about the Navy taking over operations in the English uh, Channel because Priti Patel hasn't been able to get a handle on asylum seeker crosses, crossings, should I say, and Brexit has made the whole situation worse because Britain can't send people back. And what that means is we have to process them here, which I'd rather we did. We, I'd rather we open safe points of entry and actually assess people's claims here rather than, you know, forcing them through this perilous path. But um, here we go. Um, also, there's a side note. There's a bit of talk about how apparently the British government said Ghana are going to process people's asylum claims. And then Ghana were like, what? No, we ain't going to do that. And it just look, we look so stupid. So the armed forces are set to take charge of operations looking to limit migrant crossings in the English Channel. Home Secretary Priti Patel said the MOD, the Ministry of Defence, of Defence, you know, protecting us from asylum seekers, has been commissioned as a crucial operation partner to protect our channel against illegal immigration. Again, you know, it's not illegal for these people to come here. And the government always argue that they are, you know, they come through Europe, which obviously safe countries, but asylum seekers don't have to stay in the first safe country they land in. Otherwise, you're talking about enormous pressure on Greece and Italy, which is very unfair on those countries. You know, we should work together. Safer nations should work together to help process asylum claims, especially when your nation was involved in destabilizing some of these countries. Ha. Huh. Dave. The move could begin within weeks. Also, Tony Blair as well. Let's not forget him. So, the MOD sources told the BBC discussions about the armed forces working with the Home Office and Border Force have been taking place for several weeks. They said no decision had been made over how the Royal Navy or other services would be involved, and there was no indication it would involve pushing migrant boats back to France. Because again, if one of these Royal Navy ships right tries to push one of these boats back, and we'll look at the size of some of these Royal Navy ships as well, and something happens, they capsize or they die. You know, people fall overboard. Whatever happens, right? How are the Royal Navy going to live with that? The Royal Navy are designed to protect British waters. Yes, they played a key part in colonialism back in the day. But nowadays, it's more there to protect British waters, um, you know, stop piracy, really. And these asylum seekers are not pirates. Patel suggested in the House of Commons that the armed forces could be involved in the controversial policy, saying this was absolutely the policy of the government. So the policy of the government is to do incredibly dangerous things to put people in harm's way. Because if you think, if you push their boats back towards France, do you think they're not going to just come back? Honestly, the state of this government. The plans first reported in the Times could see Johnson give the Navy authority over the government vessels in the Channel. And again, you know, you look at the timing of this article coming out, right? Let's have a look. Has it come out a few days ago? Not, not that long ago. About four days, right? So four days takes us to, what's that? Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday. Operation Red Meat. That's what this is part of, Operation Red Meat. Ms. Patel told MPs the crossings were unfair, unacceptable and lethally dangerous. Why don't you open up safe pointers, points of entry then, you clown? Honestly. Oh, totally unnecessary. Where the, She said France and other EU member states were safe countries. Now, we've talked previously about how in France it takes a year and a half to get your asylum claim heard. In Britain, it's six months. A year and a half is a long time to live with nowhere safely. A year and a half is a long time. Yes, these countries are safe. There's no war going on in them. But what are the quality of lives that these asylum seekers have? Honestly, I'm not maligning France here. Um, you know, maybe France could do more. But the problem is, do they have the funds to do it? You know, if other European countries com contribute a lot more, including Britain, we would have a much better situation here. But uh, we chose to be clowns about it. And this is the result of it. Mr Elwood, who is a former veterans minister, described the proposals as being rushed out. Speaking to Sky News, the Tory MP said the plans were a massive distraction for the military from the growing threats from China and Russia. This isn't this isn't what our Navy should be doing, which is true. It shouldn't be. This is a massive distraction. It's red meat for the base. That's what it is. We've got some analysis here from Mark Easton. For a Prime Minister who promised his Brexit deal would see the UK take back control of its borders, the failure to stop record numbers of asylum seekers arriving on the Kent coast in small boats is a political embarrassment. Because it's embarrassing for them, because they're like, oh, we took control of our borders, like, how can, you can't stop these people coming. It's like, well, realistically, we're out of Dublin 3, but we shouldn't mention that because that was Brexit. So we should say that the country is so great and so generous that people are coming here. Me. The Royal Navy may be able to provide better intelligence on where inflatables and dinghies are expected to make landfall, 
but the great majority of those coming to seek sanctuary in Britain are already intercepted before they reach the coast. You know, they're intercepted and brought here if the UK is at the you know the safest point of um safest place to land, you know, the quickest place, because these rubber dinghies are not designed to cross the English Channel. It's dangerous, incredibly dangerous. Plans to push small boats into French waters appears to have been deemed too dangerous, um, and the often trailed um, idea of processing um, asylum seekers offshore in another country has so far failed to materialise. Because who's going to help us here? Because as soon as they land here, they're our problem. You know, you can't be like, oh yeah, um, you've landed here, but we're going to ship you off to Ghana. You can't do that, and we're going to talk about the Ghana stuff specifically in a moment. Um, asylum seeker arrival facilities in Kent are currently being expanded. This is what we should have been doing from the start. We should have been talking to France and creating safe points of entry. We haven't. The government and refugee conf uh, organisations agree the long-term solution is the creation of official safe routes for asylum seekers fleeing conflict zones. So make safe routes then. Why are you not doing this? Let's not forget the UK actually closed these safe routes from Afghanistan to the UK. Why would you do that unless you never cared in the first place? You can agree with organisations, oh yes, we need to open more safe routes to our country, and then not do anything. Honestly. That's something the BBC article misses. The BBC article should mention this. Really irritates me. Um, Shadow Home Secretary Yvette Cooper saying the Labour MP said the government had brought the Navy in to patrol the Channel in 2019, but the two vessels used had intercepted no boats and had cost £780,000. Almost a million to do nothing. Responding to the plans of the Refugee Council, Enver Solomon described them as cruel and inhumane. It's a desperate move by a government that isn't able to find solutions that will ensure orderly, manageable and fair asylum a fair asylum system, he added. But Dover MP Natalie something said the news sent a clear message over how, bruv, it doesn't send anything because they're still going to come here. They're still going to come here. It doesn't mean anything sticking some Royal Navy ships on. Honestly, in December, four Iranian men cro who crossed in small boats had their convictions for immigration offences quashed by the Court of Appeal, which concluded it had not been proven they intended to enter the UK legally. So even when the Home Office and other groups take them to court, the asylum seekers to court, nothing gets done. They get found um, innocent or quashed, shall I say. Uh, this is a Royal Navy ship, right? Um, th these are the kind of size of the dinghies and things like that they're going to be dealing with. There's no way a ship of this size can deal with this. Absolutely impossible. We've already seen stories uh, last year when beef was kicking over with Iran about the fear of you know Iran using small ships to sail into bigger ships, you know, kind of blow them up. Because the Royal Navies, you know, these big battleships aren't designed to fight off small ships. That's what's going to happen here. You've got helis in the sky. They're not going to be able to stop anyone. All they can do is provide intelligence, honestly. Now we go to our next story, which is about how apparently the UK is talking to the Ghanaian government about how it can help alleviate immigration problems. Now deleted tweet suggests. So apparently they based this, the UK government had based it on tweets that were deleted by the Ghana MFA. They're not even, they don't even have a blue tick. This could be anyone. It might be an official account, but official accounts usually have some sort of blue tick. You know, this was dated the 8th of September 21. And then the Ghanaian government have come out and said, we no. They said, Ghana has slapped down Britain's Operation Dead Meat Plan, in which they hope to send over thousands of asylum seekers to the West African nation. Home Office officials were said to have approached officials in Ghana and Rwanda with plans of setting up migration, immigration hubs. This would mean hundreds of asylum seekers arriving in the UK from France would be flown to those countries while their asylum claims are processed. And again, how expensive would it be to do that? And what do you do when their asylum, asylum claims are found to be um, you know, want, you know, uh, warrant them to claim asylum. You're going to fly them back here? Honestly? This would mean... Um, but Ghanaian officials blasted any reports of such plans, insisting they have never held discussions with the Home Office officials. So they, they're just making this stuff up by the looks of it. As its Foreign Office appeared to mock Johnson's strategy to save himself with his Operation Red Meat strategy, they called Operation Dead Meat. So not only, right, have the Home Office been called essentially liars by the looks of it by the Ghanaian and Rwandan governments respectively, they've also rubbished his Operation Red Meat and called it Operation Dead Meat. We are being mocked. You know when that Tory graph writer said, oh, the UK is going to be a laughing stock if uh, Boris resigns over um, drinking a bottle of Crete? We already are. We're being mocked by these countries, calling it Operation Dead Meat. Mocked. Brutally savaged. Oh, pain is what I feel right now. 
we should have stayed in the Dublin 3 agreement if the EU let us. We should have negotiated that, but we didn't, and we're clowns. But um, yeah, anyways, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.